Oh, good grief. Right, hello. So we are going to have a little look at a nice mini fun um, fitness class for your dogs now. Um, so what this is going to entail is I'm going to try and use um, items mm. at home that you might have. Um, and also I know there are people that will be watching that have got dogs that have got fitness stuff at home. Um, so I will be using some fitness bits and pieces, but I'll try and give you some alternatives that you can use if you don't have it. Um, what we're going to have is um, a couple of warm-up exercises for you to get started. Um, <laughs> I've talked to the camera so much this week, <laughs> these two just don't think I've got an imaginary friend. Um, we're going to start off with a couple of warm-up exercises, and I'm going to give you um, about four main exercises to work your dogs. Um, all ones that are, are quite light, but you can make it a little bit more advanced if your dog does fitness already. Um, and then a couple of exercises to cool back down again. So it's just something extra for you to do with your dogs at the moment. So they've got their, you, you have your one piece of exercise per day, which will probably be your dog's walk. Oh. I know. Um, so then you've got this as an additional way of exercising your dogs. Now you will see when I do it, I am treating my dogs for the exercises. My treats are very, 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 very small. Okay. So just to show you how small my treats are, just to spread them out a tiny bit there. That's how big they are. I don't know if you can see that very well. So they are tiny. Okay. So do break your treats right up. Um, into tiny pieces or you can try and see if your dog will work for a few things and then give them their treats. You could work, get your dogs to work for food, it depends on what they have. My dogs are raw fed so I'm not really going to be trying to give them bits of mints um, or a, half a wing. Um, but if they're on um, kibble or on a, you know, like a dried, a, a dehydrated food, pardon me, then you might be able to get away with using their food for this so they're not actually then having too much more. Um, so if you're wondering why I'm doing this, what, what gives me the, uh, <laughs> the right to teach you how to exercise your dogs, um, I am a certified professional canine fitness trainer um, and have been for a few years. So this is another part of my, uh, my passion with animals, with dogs, um, is the fitness side of things. So uh, hopefully this will give you something that will be a bit of fun for you and your dogs to do, but it does have a practical element because you are actually working your dog's body at the same time. Okay, so I hope you enjoy. Um, I've got some silly pieces of equipment we're going to be using, and like I say, when I do use the proper stuff, um, I'll give you some alternative ideas. Okay, start with uh, sending a dog around something and then around you. So what I mean by that, I'll move Ripley out the way. We're going to go around an item and then around one leg or around you. Ripley, we can't see, darling. Right, so I'll do it with Ripley. Stay there, Ripley, circle. And then Ripley go around. Good girl. Good. Okay. So you're asking your dog to go around an item first. So around that way. And then to go the opposite direction. They're going either around one leg or Ripley circle. And then around you. Okay. So which way around you do it is entirely up to you. What you use is entirely up to you. I am literally using um, RBD2. Good girl. That was very nice. Go around there. And then go round, and go round there. Yay, very nice. Um, it could be a bag of kibble if your dog will go round and go round it. Yay, good girl. <laughs> Mum's in the way. Circle. Oh, okay, go round. Go round, Mum. Yeah. Yes. You know, whatever your dogs might go round that you have in your house is absolutely fine to use. So, ideally, you want to try and do a few repetitions of that. If your dog knows how to do this one, remember we don't want to start them off going really, really fast because it's meant to be a warm up. So unless they've already had, you know, walk around the garden or something, or they've just come back from a walk, um, you know, make it reasonably slow. Don't don't encourage them to go really, really quickly to begin with. Um, oh, <laughs> you got your chin. That's very pretty piece of uh, piece of leaf. Um, so guide them round nice and slow. Then after a couple, they could then go a little bit quicker if you wanted them to. Um, you can increase the distance a bit more if you've got room, but again, you don't want them going too quickly um, and you can go both directions with them. But what they're doing now is stretching out um, the whole body. They're warming up pelvis and hips and shoulders. They're warming up um, the toe joints. They're warming up ankles, knees, everything else. So that's a nice sort of very semi um, stretch as they're moving around those areas there. Okay, so have a start with that. So getting your dogs to go. Figure of eight around an 
So we're going to get your dogs to do some uh, left and right looks at the moment. Next one, so we're going to ask your dogs to go into peekaboo. So with the assumption that they know that that is peekaboo. So guide your dog into here. And then what we're doing is going to use the touch. So the touch, which is the nose to hand and touch, good boy. And touch, yes. You don't have to get them to do just two. You can do one at a time if you prefer. Back up a bit, please. And touch, good boy. And touch, yes. And what we're looking for is that they then turn their head left and right a little bit. Okay. Touch. So I've just lowered my hand slightly to make sure Mervyn's turning. Touch. No touch. Yes. Turning properly. That's a very good boy. Right, Ripley, is it your turn, baby? Ripley, peekaboo. Yeah, good girl. And touch. Good girl. Nice. Touch. Yes. Mervyn, you're in the way. Over there, baby. Good boy. Hold on. Ripley. Touch. Good. If they start coming too far forwards, Ripley touch. So if they're sneaking forward like Ripley was there, they're probably not going to be turning their head, they're just going to be leaning. So just make sure that they come back a little bit or send them back round into peekaboo. So if I do this side on so you can see that a little bit better. That's a good girl, Merlin, peekaboo. So Merlin's here, touch, yes. If he's too far out, touch, then you can see the whole body moves. So back up a bit. Good boy, and touch properly, yes. And you want them to actually be moving. Again, if I let him come out a bit, touch, touch. He's just leaning and not really making contact, okay? So it's just making sure that they do that properly. Rips chips, big boo. Okay, do pause up then. Touch, it's a weirdo. And yeah, little weirdo, touch, touch it. Not you. <laughs> and Ripley, touch, yes. Touch, good girl, very good, very good, okay. So again, a few of those just to get your dogs warmed up, so they're getting a really nice um, neck stretch. Um, the neck stretch then also continues um, down the cervical spine into the um, thoracic and lumbar spine as well, so it actually gives quite a, a longer stretch than it probably looks. Um, and as they're leaning, they're doing something called weight shifting, which means they are then working the side that they're leaning on, so if they're leaning that way, they're putting the weight onto that side so they're getting the muscles to, to work and then they're leaning the other way and that gets the muscles to work as well. So it's a really nice one to start a warm up with because although it looks like they're only doing a small amount of movement, actually quite a lot going on inside the body to help them get nicely warmed up. Okay, so yeah, a few of those on each side. Um, you can ask them to just do touch, touch, treat, touch, touch, treat. Um, they can learn to literally then go head, head, get a treat which might mean they're not doing the stretch quite as much, it might mean it's much quicker, whereas ideally, <laughs> Ripley, um, you want them to do a touch and touch, you want it to be a little bit slower, so that's why I sometimes do two in the same direction, just so they don't get into a pattern where their head just turns, okay? Um, check that your hand isn't too high, because if it's high up and they're looking up, you're going to get slight movement, if your hand is here, and they need to turn much, much more, okay? So give that a go for me, see how you get on. Anything at all that we're doing, if you want me to have a look and see what your dog's form looks like, do a video and, and let me know. You can pop it in the comments here because then everyone gets a chance to, to sort of watch each other and see feedback. Um, or you can, you can PM me if you'd rather. I'll give you some feedback on that if you want me to have a little look. All right. So next exercise, we are going to be doing walking back. And for our walking back, we are either walking back flat or walking back onto something. Okay, so we shall have a look at both. So for your walking back, I need one of you. Um, dog in front, treat on the nose or actually under the chin works better to get them to move backwards. Got it? Like so. If they know it, then just ask them to walk backwards a few paces. There you go, round me please. Good boy. You go get that. Ripper's chips, always in a stand to begin with. Under the chin, good girl. <laughs> and let them go backwards as they try and work out where the food is. So under the chin, on the nose. Um, or you could see if they understand what you're asking for, walk back. And <laughs> get your bottom in the air. If they do what Ripley did then, which was kind of scooting across the floor like that, go back to put your hand down. They should be standing. Uh, okay, so you're going to do... A few of them just on the floor like that. Um, if you run out of room, obviously just bring them back across the floor, carry on. We're then going to add something to it. So 
uh, depends on what you're doing with your dog. If they're advanced, if they've done this before, then um, you can add something behind your dog. I don't know there is. Um, so I'm using a platform, which is, as you can see, not overly high, but plenty of room to put back feet on. It can be whatever you've got to hand, really. Um, it doesn't need to be very high. It could be um, a box, if you've got like a small box, it's only that sort of the thickness. A book, if you've got a large enough book, and maybe cover it with something so it's not slippery. Um, but something that they can step back onto, <laughs> you two. And so then all we're doing, off you come, is guide them off of it, walk back, good. And let them to walk onto it, okay? So if your dog hasn't walked back before, then you're sticking with just on the floor, guiding them into a walk back. For the dogs that have done this before, a few walk backs on the floor first, and then we're adding in the platform, okay? So to do the platform side of things, guide your dog onto it from the front, so off you come, like that, so they know it's there. Guide them off completely, <laughs> and then ask them to walk back, or guide them backwards like you were just doing, if need be. So I'll show you with, with mine, and walk back, good boy. Ripley and walk back. Good girl. So if they're quite new to this or haven't done it with a platform before, don't want to take them too far. You literally just guide them off just enough like that and then ask for the walk back. And that will mean that they've got less distance to go wrong or get distracted or get demotivated and they're more likely to do it properly. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but if they do understand, bring them further forward. Walk back. Good. That's very nice. You can take it a step further, so if your dog really knows what you're talking about, then we can, uh, right, come on for a sec, let's move this. <laughs> Get off. You can go further than that if you wish. Right on there, top sides, please. Good. And actually ask them to go, or oh, 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 back, or oh, back, 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 yes. And end up with back paws off and front paws on. So if they're really advanced, if they do know how to do this already, then come, come, and walk back. And back, keep going. <laughs> and that really gets your dogs to um, move their feet more. When they know how to step up and then step off again, then they're really thinking about where their feet are. They've not got so much drive there, so that you know that they're um, using the back feet and their weight shifting better. So um, they really know where their back feet are and they really know about their body awareness. So it's a really good exercise to do that extra bit off the back there if you can. It depends what they're stepping up to of course. You might not have a back for them to step off. It might be solid. Um, but if they can then you can give that a go as well. So walking back flat and then walking back onto something. Please don't make it very high. So if I bring you off, you come off for a bit. I know you like doing that, good girl. So if you look here, Ripley's hock is here. It's no higher than that. Okay, so you don't want it to be as high as, you know, top of the leg. Here. You don't want to be as high as, as the shoulder or the back of the leg because they're going to have to stretch too much, um, which, which isn't what we want. We're not trying to make them overstretch. We're trying to give them slightly more of a challenge. So keep it shorter and that's actually better for them and then they'll reach out better to get onto it rather than trying to stretch up and then they end up in a really weird position with the cervical spine and the uh, thoracic really, really, really <laughs> bowed like that, which isn't that good. So a nice small item and asking them to either just come off and step back once if they're new to it bring them forward a bit more and get them to walk back if they can do that. And then you've got walking back and stepping over. So they end up doing a pause up, so front paws are up, um, to do it if they're more advanced. Okay, so have a go, see how you get on with that one. So platform's out again. What we are looking at, let's just turn you round, with the assumption that your dog knows how to do a sit to a stand and back to a sit again, we are going to ask your dog to do front paws up on something. So this time I've got a sturdy platform, um, but I will show you another version. And we're just literally asking them to go into a sit, that's good, and then backwards into a stand. Okay, so if you watch what my dogs do as they go into position, I'm bringing them forward and sit, so they tuck under. So they're not moving over there, they're staying here and their bums tuck under. And then to get the stand, I want them to stay in the position they're in but the back legs are gonna move backwards, okay? They're not moving forward into it, they're actually moving backwards. So Ripley, you're meant to be sitting, good girl, that's it. And then I'm going to get the treats in place and almost push them slightly forward. So bring the treat down and forward and that gets them to kick, it's called a kick back stand. So they kick back, then back legs. So if you watch their legs once more for me, sit, how's that? Sit up, good girl, and stand. 
yes okay so by doing that you're automatically shifting the weight to the back end because the front feet are up so we're working on your dog's rear end so that is hips and pelvis and knees ankles toes um, and also down the back end of the body a little bit more as well as they do hello as they do that kickback stand um, they are using the back end better when dogs um, stand to be to move forward so kind of how we teach them to stand in, in obedience they're actually kind of shifting the weight forward and using that to propel them forward into a stand whereas when we do it this way then literally if you try it yourself if you you know if you kind of just lift up from here rather than moving forward into a stand you'll feel how much you're using those legs and that's the same for your dogs so you want them to be using the back legs to go into a stand position it's much more controlled they're much more aware of what they're doing um, and it means they're oh, are you off to it means they're then working the back end so much much more effectively so you can give that a try all right Mel yeah if you've got something you can use that's got unstable equipment attached to it then you can use that so this is now upping the advanced a little bit more so depending on what you've got if you happen to have pods you can be using your pods if you haven't got pods you can use the platform you can use disc balance discs like that um, it's entirely up to you, it depends on what you've got. So Ripley's already in position now, she's got her front feet on, which is brilliant, what a good girl. And Ripley sits, good. So because Ripley sits like that, that tucks it, her feet stay on the pods and stand, yes. And likewise when I get her to do the stand, why are you turning, good girl, sit. That's a good girly, I'll show you this on something else in a second. And stand, yes, good girl, good girl, off you come, that's very good. So let's try Merlin with two things. Find out then, baby. <laughs> you never work with dogs and dogs. Um, so for Merlin, he's going to do two pods and a disc. So I'm upping it even more for him because he deserves it. Did you, mate? All right then. So Ripper's chips. Ripper's on the bed. Merlin, what are you? Oh, dear. Right, hold on. Cause you just moved everything. No, rip it off. Merlin, pause. Hold on. Ripley, bugger off. No, no, pause off. There. Not me. There. Good. So get the position first. So this is a lot harder for him now. Ripley's lost a treat. So sit. Good. So again, the tuck sit means he doesn't go anywhere. And I do want him to move backwards. He's now got instability everywhere. Did you get it, baby girl? Sit. Good boy. Good. Sit. And stand. Good boy. So he's having to really think about what he's doing now. You'll find your dogs do really, really get tired from doing these sorts of exercises. So into a sit, stand, good boy. Is that clever? You are clever, aren't you? We're out of treats again. Getting through these quickly, aren't we? Oh, okay. <laughs> so it depends on what you've got. If you've got one piece of unstable, unstable equipment, um, like a disc, for example, then you could use that. Um, it could be a raised bed, it could be a dog dead again. But you want it could be a towel just sort of rolled up but some way of getting the front feet higher um flat you know nice and solid to start with so it could be the book from the start again um and getting the sits to the stands if they can do that no problem whatsoever and you know they can do it onto something unstable so that they're still the front paws are on there and you're asking for the sit to the stand like that so if you've got pods now's a great time to use them if you haven't got pods it doesn't matter but i do know some people have so a balanced disc would work, the fit bone works, a towel rolled up, um, you know, good old sofa cushion would work. Just whatever it is, it just needs to be in relation to your dog. So if you've got a very small dog who's, you know, up to the shoulders there, don't then get an item that's that high because that's a bit crazy. Um, but, you know, get something that's suitable for your dog. Working on, thank you sweet pea, working on getting that tuck sit. So if you're not sure how to get that, you could set it up so that your item, I don't want to move you now so that your item is right next to something, like the sofa here, so that then when your dog's standing and you ask for the sit, they can't go backwards, they have to tuck the bum under, there's nowhere else to go. Um, so you could try that. Um, you could also work on doing it without any kind of equipment and just work on getting a little recall. So call your dogs in, and as they come in close, lift the hand up quite quickly, and that often gets the head to lift and tucks the bum under quite nicely that way as well. Um, there are a few ways you can use a platform so that actually they can literally just about fit on what you've got um, and then they will tuck because otherwise they'll fall off. It's obviously only a low platform, not high. 
Um, so there's a few ways of getting that tuck sit. And from the sit, we're then guiding them. You might need to just bring your treat slightly forward so your dog starts to shift the weight forward to go into the stand, but then underneath the chin, and that gets them to shift the weight backwards again, and then they kick the back feet out. So that's the stand we're after if we can get it. Okay, so at the end of the world, if you can't, but it does mean your dog is working a bit harder. And as we're doing fitness, obviously we want them working as hard as we can. If you've got more than you know one piece of equipment or you've got a few things you can use, by all means, use a few bits. I mean, you could do the sit to the stand. If you've got a small enough dog just on one piece of equipment, that would work. Um, you could try something like, a, if you've got a blow up Lilo, something like that, that would work as well. Memory foam top up, you know, anything like that really. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything special, but working on them sit to the stands. Ideally with front feet up, but work around what you have to help your dogs best, okay? We're gonna do something called doggy push-ups this time. Paul Merton's just done them for a few minutes and then I realised that my phone storage was full so I'm refilming now, I've cleared some bits off. Um, so I'm using a platform, but you don't have to use a platform, I'll explain more about that in a moment. Um, all we're looking for is that your dog will do a nice um, neat and tidy down for a couple of seconds and then back into a stand again, but obviously we want it done a certain way. So Merton down, so ideally not from a sit, which he did do then, and back into a stand again. Good boy, that's nice. So if you notice Merlin went backwards slightly into that down that time, wait and stand. And then I want him to stand straight up. So having the platform, if you see where his front feet are, <laughs> he's looking as well, um, by having something for them to stand on and they're at the front, they're not gonna be able to come forward as much because then they'll obviously come off of it. So it just helps them to maintain that nice, good boy, that nice cantilever position for both feet down and the stand hasn't got to be a complete platform like this it could be a couple of books pushed together um, it could be a raised bed like we've got over here depends on what you've got you know around the house that you can use but I say you don't have to use anything I just happen to have a platform down that was rubbish stand up good boy Merlin ready down yes that's better and stand so my dogs know this so therefore I ask a little bit more from mine but um, help them out if they're not too sure what it is you're asking for Show them what it is you want. So, Merlin, can you come off, baby? Ripley on. That's lovely. Good girl, stand. Good girl. Go round, please. That side. Good. So, Ripley, down. All the way. Down. Good girl. Can you tell what I've been working on? And stand. So, now I'm showing you with hand signals this time. Oh, good girl. And then stand. Yes, good girl. And rippers, down. Yes, so nice and straight down and stand <laughs> yay good girl you're so bendy dog you're so bendy so i do wanted to do it on the spot really but she's just too bendy down yes and ripley stand yes so you can use a touch to get your stand if that helps your dog so again we can do it like that completely on a nice flat surface or if your dog is more advanced we can do that on something else so then when we start doing it on something else um, it's up to you if you do it completely on an item. So again, you've got the raised bed, you could be using something like that, or you can do it via a couple of items. So if I show you with two things, right, mind out, darling, or don't. So I'm going to put the back end on the platform and the front end on the fit bone. Just mind out for a sec. Okay, and so I'm gonna bring them close together to begin with, just to help your dog out. Now, please mind, if you are new, if your dog is new to fitness, or if they have got a known weakness anywhere, this is advanced, okay? Don't start this yet. Just do what I was doing on the flat surface. This particular version is for dogs that have done conditioning before with me, okay? This is where I worry about doing conditioning sometimes because I can't see the dogs. So, front paws on one item, back paws on the other. God. Right, paws, that's it, and down. And then what we're doing is a form stand of planking, okay? So by doing that, they are needing to work the two ends of the body, which means that the core then has to be stronger, all right? So if they can do that from that kind of distance, you can then start gradually moving the distance out slightly further. <laughs> I'm gonna move this now, you're not gonna like it. There you go. And there you go, a little bit further. <laughs> Obviously think about the dog's size. Ready? Stand up, please stand, and down. Yes, down, good. And when they do that down, good girl, stand, Merlin. 
and the stand, they should ideally be keeping nice and straight as they do it. So they shouldn't be bending either way down. So as you saw there, lovely and straight in that top line across the back here. And then staying for the stand should be nice and straight. They shouldn't need to kind of get up, bum goes up and then they go up. Um, <laughs> do the play now. Um, they shouldn't need to when they go when they lay down you shouldn't find that the the whole body goes down here and that the backs then dipping because that shows they're not holding themselves in position so then they might not quite be ready to do this exercise so I would do it completely flat okay um, so I haven't got to be two items or an item that's unstable that could literally be two things that are quite solid um, one thing that's unstable two things that's unstable whole thing is unstable that's entirely up to you depending on what you've got but like I say this version with the gap is the advanced version so that is for the dogs that have done this sort of thing before um, and we're confident that they're not going to sort of strain anything while doing that um, if you're not sure don't do it okay is the best rule of thumb oh hello sweetie what are you doing Ritz? Um, they're just doing their own workout now so doing a few repetitions of that however you see fit to do it give it a try each of these exercises with the assumption that your dog hasn't got a, a, an injury there or recovering from an illness that's caused them to have weak muscles somewhere, then you can do a good four to six repetitions for each thing. Um, if they do it fitness every day anyway, and this is just an extra workout for them, you could probably do a few more, but it's actually better to get the quality rather than the quantity in fitness. So less, but doing it well is actually much, much better. Okay, so next we're going to look at your cool down exercises. So have a go with those and then we'll start cooling your dogs back down. So next going to look at some um, general weight shifting. So by weight shifting, this literally is what it sounds like. It's helping your dog to shift the weight from side to side. Now, we need to slow things right down for this. We don't want to be racing this one because we want the muscles to actually be working. And if you go too fast, it's not actually beneficial to what you're doing at all. So, you can have your dog in numerous positions. For me, I find having them in peekaboo to be one of the easiest ways to work with my dog, um, but it's entirely up to you how you do it. So I'll do it in peekaboo so you can see it first, um, and then you can work on it however you like. So if you have them here, it's a good boy, what you can then do, good girl, wait, wait, you put your hands just on the, oh my God, on the shoulders either side and you're literally moving holding to the center and moving holding to the center again okay so just to show you this one there come here it's okay Merlin <laughs> talk come back here right back up good right Merlin Ripley go over there for a second please up there good boy so weight shift to the right back to the middle weight shift to the left back to the middle weight shift to the right Back to the middle and to the left and back to the middle good boy i know you don't understand that one do you for merlin that's just the weirdest thing ever good boy aren't you all right rips chips you have a go for me oh can you get the way baby so up there so on the shoulders and center <laughs> and center weight shift to the right center weight shift to the left Center. It's a very good girl. Good girl. You can do the back end as well. So that's up to you again how you do it. If your dog happens to understand how to stand the other way through your legs, so my 30 night advanced class certainly does. One dog at a time. Right, peek a bum, Merlin, please. You can have them here. Yeah. Wait. And again, side to side. Right. Left. Good, you can feel the muscles uh, contracting and, and expanding as they're doing all the lovely movement they're doing. Right, hold on, Rippers, pink a bum. Good girl, there's a good girl. You stand, wait. <laughs> no, that way. Good boy. So, stand up. <laughs> good girl. Is that weird? They don't like it in that position. Stand behind them if need be. Good girl. Don't have to really shove them. It's just enough movement that it gets the muscles to work. If you stand up and just literally lean, and then back to normal, and then lean, and then back to normal, you'll be able to feel muscles um, moving in your own legs. So it just shows you kind of what you're working with. Now, if your dog can do that, if they're happy with that, if they've done 
quite a lot of work on um, other types of equipment, unstable stuff, then you can make that a little bit harder on their muscles, probably easier for you, by getting them to be on something, okay? So for example, this is a raised bed, not raised by a lot, this is Cassie's, but it is a raised bed. So you could ask them to do it on here. Oh, clever girl. So you need them standing. Stand. Good girl. Standing up and then literally, <laughs> we're going to do the front, are we? Because, yeah, so to the right, back to the middle, quickly, to the left, back to the middle, to the right, back to the middle, quickly, to the left, back to the middle. So then you've got, she's sitting down, but she is still working the front. So they're then still moving, but because they're on something that's got a little bit of instability there, actually it's helping you to get that little bit of weight shifting going, okay? Now if you don't have your hand in your dog very much, they might find this a little bit weird at first, which is, my dogs are thinking, this is a bit strange, we don't normally do it like this. Um, so it might be a bit, bit, bit weird for them. The other way is if you've got something you can stand over. So um, Cooper, I have your fit bone. <laughs> so borrow Cooper's fit bone if need be, and you can use that. Right, repeat off. Good, off, take one off. And so you can do this like that in the peekaboo. Let him go peekaboo. It's a good boy. So then they're on the unstable item. Good boy. And you can either then still do the weight shifting, which as you can see, suddenly becomes a hell of a lot easier when they're on something that's wobbly. And I'm going with him as well, just to make sure he's okay. Good boy. What a good boy. Or the other way of doing it. Right, it's Ripley's turn, please. Go get it. Ripper's chips is to go back to whoop, stand up, good girl. These head turns and actually keeping the other piece of food rather than the touch this time. Stand please. And this will give you some natural weight shifting. Just like that, doesn't it, sweet pea? Hey, eh? doesn't it? Stand. Good girl. Good girl. Off you go. Okay, so what you use is up to you. It might be a blanket folded up a couple of times, it might be a sofa cushion. Um, but if you want to try and do it on something that's unstable, that you don't have, you know, sort of this sort of equipment, you don't have to have it. I have it, so I use it. Um, just on something that's not the flat, sturdy floor, and working on your dog leaning back to the middle, leaning back to the middle again. Okay, so you're gonna get a few. On each side you might do a couple each way stop for a moment and then do a couple each way again just to get your dogs used to it hello um if they can go on something unstable so it can make it a little bit easier for you but it gets them working that little bit harder again um for people that have got fitness equipment um it can be one item like this or you can have a couple of items there so it might be that you've got something like a disc and a and a fit bone <laughs> you're doing mad um, like a disc or a fit bone and then you can you go over there please so they're part and part especially if you've got a bigger dog and then again you can do your weight shifting like that hopefully because she's not going to like that good girl or you can do it with your hand so i'm just pushing slightly good boy good boy so you can do it that way as well so if you've got a dog that can't fit on your one piece of equipment if you've got it you can have them on two things like this and all I'm doing here is just helping her to lean while I'm keeping her attention on me good very good clever pair okay so quite a few ways of doing that so it might be that you do have a, a balance disc at home it might be one that you use so you could have maybe front paws on that and back paws on your dog's bed or a blanket or something so just mix and match a little bit um, if they're slightly too big to fit on one piece of equipment at a time uh, they can do it from a seat like I say and just work the shoulders to get them used to it that's no problem whatsoever but if you then have a work with the stand and see if you can get them to stand for a bit longer um, then it makes it even more beneficial later on all right so have a go at that do a few repetitions of that one for me see what works for you whether you want them in front of you or between your feet or, or what works best um, and uh, yep, yeah, so here you go. Okay, so we're going to look at paw lifts to start with. 
So how you do a paw lift with your dog isn't tied up to you. This is part of the cool down. So I like to have mine here for this just because it, it works best for me. But you want your dog standing and we're going to ask for a paw. Good boy. Other paw. Good, that's very nice. And then if they are comfortable with it, we are then also going to do the other end. So peek a bum. Good boy. You wait. Here, here, here. Good. Rip, can we move over there, please? Wait. And then we're just going to lift and lower and lift and like good boy. So it's not very much of a movement, particularly with the back legs. It's more that as you lift it up, it kind of just goes straight up and straight down. Okay, you're not lifting it out because that's going to be uncomfortable. You're not lifting it up because that's going to be uncomfortable. It's literally just taking the, the ankle and lift so it kind of folds into itself and then straightens straight back out again. Okay, so I'll show you the rips chips. Rippers, peekaboo. There's my good girl. And Ripley paw, good. I mean, I'm lifting their legs quite high, paw, but then they do this paw, they do this quite a lot, so you might want to have it a little bit lower, okay? And then the back feet, I'll do side on so you can see better. And I'm just, Merlin, come out here, go in there. I'm just going to lift up and down, stand and straight up and down, you can see I've done that before, <laughs> straight up and straight down again, I'm um, not sure if Ripley's a bit close for you to see that, come here sweetie, let's go over there, stand, and then we're going to, no stand, straight up, down, early, <laughs> never work more than one door, um, at a time, so that's what you're going to do for your first cool down exercise, so you're working, you're lifting a paw, lifting a paw, lift up the back leg, lift up the back leg, go round, in whatever sequence you like a few times if your dog isn't used to doing a paw when they're standing you could do it from a sit but if you can try it from a stand that'd be really really good um you might need to make it much much smaller exercise you might need to be facing them and, and, and do it that way or they might give paw to your foot perhaps and then for the back feet if they're not used to you lifting up a back foot you might literally at this stage just be touching the ankle and treating or you might be able to touch the ankle and just kind of just lift it you know like a to mill off the floor and back down again that is fine get your dogs used to it if they're not happy with it they're going to start moving around and then you're more likely to actually cause some damage by pulling your dog about when you shouldn't be so it should be quite a nice smooth motion like it was with these guys but build them up okay they've both been doing this since they were puppies so they, they kind of know what they're doing here um, so have a go with that okay just a few times with each leg it might just be once round that's fine but if you can do a few that works even better why you always have to show your bottom to the camera. We are going to finish with a nice stretch, which is going to be the play bow. So if you haven't done a play bow before, you want your dog in a stand, you're going to have your hand closest to your dog's back end is going to go under here. I'm just going to show you here, but don't, don't need to lean over, you'll be here. So under there just to stop them from laying down and you're just going to lure slightly downwards. So that is fine to start with if they haven't done it before because they are getting into a similar position. And we're just going to bring them lower and lower and you'll start finding that they do something like that. Good boy. Always guide back into a stand again. Keep the treat on the nose. Good boy. Yes, good boy. Stand. And don't ask them to lay down because you don't want them to lay down, obviously. I don't have to say anything, as you saw there. I didn't say a word to Merlin. I just asked him to do it. So holding on to them. If they go down like that straight away, that's really good. But it's not essential. They literally might just be doing that. And that is absolutely fine. And then each time you might find they go, good girl, stand. They might go a little bit more. We're asking for the stand afterwards because once they've gone into that nice stretch, we want them to stretch back into a stand again. So doing that nice action. If they do that and then into a down, it's a different action. It's still nice, but it's not the action we're after. Okay, we want to go back into a stand again. If they know how to do a play bell, mind out then, mind, then we can ask them to do that and bend. That's not anything. You bad boy, stand up and bend. <laughs> if they know it but they're being silly, then you're just going to have to guide them. You are naughty. Bend. Get your bum in the air. Good boy. Wait. And if they can hold it for a few seconds, yes. Okay. Good boy. Then that's absolutely lovely. If they need to be there for a split second, that is absolutely fine. Oh, Ripley. Ripley's learning this one at the minute. Bend. Good girl. Wait. Wait. Yes. Good girl, good girl, okay, stand. Um, ideally, you want to bring the treat quite low down. So when I gave Trip Ripley the second treat, she lifted her head up to see what I was doing. In doing that, we ended up with a really sharp curve in the cervical spine, which is something I'm not, not trying to get. I'm trying to avoid that. 
So ideally have your treat coming in quite low from the front um, and that way your dog's head will be quite low and that helps just maintain a nice a nice even curve. So it shouldn't be really, really tight. <laughs> We're getting low on treats. Um, it shouldn't be a really, really tight curve. It should be reasonably gentle, bend. What is going on with you today, mister? Back. And um, yes, bend. You are ridiculous. Bend, good boy. So that's a nice curve of the back that we've got there. If I get him to look up. Bend. Could you bum up? If I get him to look up, you can see the difference there with that neck. It's not as pleasant for him at all. Rippers, chippers. Bend, good girl. So nice and low like that. So again, a few of those. Ugh. And what we're doing then is a quite a lot of stretching because they're stretching out all of that back. They're stretching out all around the neck area. They're stretching the front legs. They're doing the stretch of the back legs. They are, it's, it's just a nice all round exercise to be doing. Um, again, if they're new to it, maybe try doing three or four. If they can do them nicely already, then you could try doing maybe sort of five or six of those to finish up. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do with these guys now is take them out into the back garden and let them They'll, they'll probably run a little bit. <laughs> have you found some treats? Um, they can trot their way to the back garden. They can have a quick mooch around there, which is another natural way of cooling the body down. Um, and then they should be ready to uh, hopefully have a bit of a nap, won't you, mate? Yeah? This is nice. Um, so give that a go. Um, if any questions, again, let me know if you want to film your dogs doing this so I can have a little look. Um, that'd be great. I'd love to see that. And I can give you feedback if you want feedback. Just ask for it. Could you give me feedback, please? Um, and have a try and this is just something to keep your dogs a little bit busy we're doing really well with the weather at the minute so we're quite lucky in that we can get outside um, but if we do get some appalling stuff coming then at least you've got something to do while you're inside with your dogs so I hope you are all doing thank you hope you are all doing well keep yourself safe keep your dogs safe and I shall speak to you very very soon